Well, 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 welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Extra Kick Podcast. Hey everyone, Coach Tony here. Welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Podcast. Hope your day's going well and thanks for tuning into the show. I'm here to answer your running and training questions so you can train smarter, stay healthy, and achieve your goals. So today we have a great question from Caleb in Chicago, and Caleb asked the question, which I've heard from a lot of people before, so I'm sure this is going to be of interest of many people. Caleb says that he lives in Chicago, he runs on concrete versus asphalt. Is that bad? Is he going to get hurt? What type of shoes should he wear, and should he drive 30 minutes or so to get to some area where he can run on asphalt or some other softer surface? So great question, Caleb, and I appreciate you offering that up to us. So first and foremost, concrete is harder than asphalt, asphalt being roads. Um, So in that sense, there's going to be less absorption of impact on concrete versus asphalt. As far as whether it hurts you more or less, I'm not not sure there's a whole lot of studies to kind of be done on that. You're going to, you know, if you Google that answer, you're going to get some people going to say, stay away from concrete. Others are going to say it's not going to bother you whatsoever. Um, i just give you my own personal experience. So I, I grew up in Boston and not a whole lot of sidewalks to run on. So I would always run on the street. So I was always running on asphalt. And then fast forward, and I've lived in Colorado for about 10 years now, and the roads are a little bit faster moving cars, and there's a lot of sidewalks. So I spend a lot of my mileage you know, 50 miles a week, probably on concrete. And I have not noticed any difference. So if I use myself as a uh, example, concrete has not impacted me whatsoever versus asphalt. You know, and the things, and actually if I kind of question a thought that comes to mind is if you do run on asphalt, so say you run on the road and you're running on asphalt, there's a good chance you're actually running the, the camber or shape of the road is actually could lead to some injury unless you're running in the middle of the road or on an asphalt bike path or something like that. So it, I think it's hard to say if, you know, running on a, you know, you could run on a flat concrete sidewalk or you could run on the curb section of the asphalt road. And because of the way the road kind of curves in a little bit or, sh- or rolls in, the, the road itself could cause you some injury. So I don't think you can necessarily say one is going to hurt more than the other. A few things I think to consider that can come into play is how you run. So, you know, some people are very, very hard when they land on their heels, and you should land on your heel. That's more that's normal. I, th- I think a lot of times people think landing on your heel is a bad thing. It's it's normal. It's kind of how you're, you know, I think our bodies were designed to run. But where it becomes a problem is when you land on your heel and you just stop. You know, when you when you land, your you should your heel is gonna touch to kind of absorb impact, but then you should have a steady motion, f- fluid forward motion. Some people will land on their heel and almost stop. It's almost pounding. You can almost hear them. In that situation, concrete, I could see that that could do some damage and more than asphalt because there's so much impact and it's not being absorbed by the surface that you're running on. So if, if you're that type of person, then I think it's important that you try to work on your, your gate, whether it's concrete or asphalt, you should be trying to work on your gate and not, hit, not hitting the ground so hard. Um, the other question Caleb brings up is about shoes. Should he go to like a more cushioned shoe? And that is, um, unfortunately, you may hear some people say, yeah, you should go to a more cushioned shoe. And that's kind of scary to hear. I, having owned a run shop for 12 years and fitting people, my biggest pet peeve is the word cushion in a running shoe is people just associate the word cushion with something that's better for them. I need more cushion. My knees hurt. I need more cushioning. It's shock absorption. So all shoes essentially have the same level of shock absorption. The word cushion in a shoe is basically a category. So there's cushion, motion control, and stability. Most people need stability. A truly cushioned shoe has no support. And the reason for that is for people who have really high arches and again, it's only about 5% of people. So most people shouldn't really be in a purely cushioned shoe. They should have some support. So as far as specific to your question, Caleb, should you switch to more of a cushioned shoe? That has nothing to do with the surface you're running on. That has really purely your biomechanics. Um, so every shoe, again, is going to have that same level of shock absorption. So yeah, don't don't change shoes purely because of surface. If you're on trails, 
maybe get a trail shoe or maybe get a shoe with a little bit more midsole to it. Or the only thing from a shoe design, I guess I could say, if you're, if you feel like you want a little bit more shock absorption is, you know, a lot of running shoes or some running shoes in the midsole, the middle of the shoe, they'll start to kind of carve out the, the shoe a little bit to make it a little bit more flexible, maybe make it look a little bit faster, a little nicer. You know, maybe you want to get a shoe that has a little bit more material in there, especially if you tend to run more midfoot and midfoot strike versus heel strike. And if the shoe has a little bit of cutout, you know, almost like an hourglass shape, then when you're landing in that midfoot, you don't have as much midsole there to kind of absorb some, some impact. So maybe from a design standpoint or shoe standpoint, you know, stay with the category of shoe that you need, but maybe stay with a shoe that has a little bit more midsole material in there. So if you land on that midfoot, you have a little bit more midsole essentially to help absorb some impact. Um, but, but other than that, I think it's somewhat of an individual thing. And if I have to use myself as a, as a case study, asphalt and concrete, I, I really haven't noticed any different knock on wood um, from an injury standpoint or speed, speed standpoint or anything. So, so thank you, Caleb, for your question. And that's it for today's show. If you haven't already done so, please consider heading to iTunes or your favorite podcast directory and subscribing or leaving a review. It'll help us reach more runners like you. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have a great day, and I will see you on the roads.